Coming up on KCCI 8 News Close Up, we are just a couple of days away from Election Day. We're sharing all of the important information you need to know as you head to the polls. Nearly 70 Iowa judges on the ballot. What is Iowa's judicial retention vote and where you can find information on every judge? And a trip across central Iowa, how voters are feeling about the upcoming election and what's driving them to the polls. This is Iowa's news leader. This is KCCI 8 News Close Up. Good morning and welcome to KCCI 8 News Close Up. I'm Chief Political Reporter Amanda Rooker. We are in the final stretch before Election Day and candidates are making their last pitch to voters as they try to lock up support. Last week, I drove across the state talking to Iowa voters about how this election feels and how they're deciding who to vote for. As the wind whistles through the streets of Boone County, it sways the signs that stretch across most sidewalks, the flapping flags, and campaign covered street corners signal that Election Day is almost here. I've never seen it like this before, and I've been around a long time. To voter Gloria Sampson, this one feels different. And I've never seen anything like this, so I'll be glad when it's over. And the democracy, um, yes, I'm very concerned about that. The elections also weighing heavily on Boone voter Mary Kay Calderon. It's disheartening, you know, really, what, what our country has come to at this point. You know, I just, I'm, it's sad. She says she's voting for Harris because she doesn't want Trump back in office. He's telling you who he is and what he is. And, you know, and I just, it's just hard for me to understand how people can fathom and, you know, go along with that. But Ogden voter Brianna Byerly definitely going for the Trump side sees things differently with everything that's going on. It's kind of sucks with the economy. <laughs> um, it's definitely changed a lot in the last four years. Some political experts are paying extra attention to places like Boone County and how voters there feel. I'm here in Boone County, which is actually one of the state's 31 swing counties. What that means is that in 2008 and 2012, the majority of people here in Boone County voted for Barack Obama in those presidential elections. But in 2016 and 2020, the majority of people in Boone County flipped and voted for Donald Trump in those presidential elections. On that switch in Boone County and others like it. It certainly showed an undercurrent of support for what Donald Trump represented, or at least an opposition to what these folks believe uh, had occurred during the Obama years. KCCI uh, political analyst Dennis Goldford says the results in Iowa's swing counties this year will show whether Trump still has that same level of support. It'd just be an interesting question in terms of political dynamics on the ground to see if the Republicans maintain support in those counties or if there's any movement one way or, or the other. Meanwhile, in Iowa's fastest growing county, we are voting for Trump. The economy is driving these West Des Moines voters to the polls. Prices are going up on gas and groceries and rent. Do you think that a vote for Trump would change that? Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, definitely. For sure. I am a little bit nervous. Waukee voter Jake Zeitz also in Adele to cast his ballot. I have a lot of women actually in my family, uh, sister and all that stuff. Um, I'm gay myself, so, you know, there's there's a lot going on, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit scary. He says he's voting for Harris. My rights, you know, if I, you know, wanted to marry, you know, that's kind of in jeopardy. Um, you know, we're, we're just kind of going backwards. Um, in terms of really everything. Some Des Moines voters agree this election feels high stakes. I think there's a lot more on the line. It's just a hot mess for real, you know what I'm saying? Barbara Taylor says she's concerned about Social Security and Medicare. Well, I think they need to be focused more on the senior citizens because of the health care situation and stuff. Um, they need to provide for them now. They worked all their life to get this money and then government don't want to give them half of the money that they deserve. And for Howard Fry. I like uh, the cost of living to go down. I'm also a big secure law and order border guy. This election feels different. For a while I thought I was going to sit this one out, but I can't sit it out and I would just encourage everybody, as hard as it is, you got to go out and do your civil duty, civic duty and go vote. Now, most of the voters also told me this election feels more divisive, and it was people on both sides saying they're hopeful that will change after this election's over. 
For Iowans voting by mail, you can track your absentee ballot. Just go to the Iowa Secretary of State's website. That's sos.iowa.gov. Enter your name, birthday, zip code. It will show you the status of your ballot. Now, if you're still missing your requested ballot, the website can also show you when the county auditor sent it your way. Now, this is new this election. That ballot has to be received by your county auditor at 8 p.m. on Election Day. If you haven't mailed it back yet, count, most county auditors are suggesting you hand deliver it to their office to make sure they receive it in time. In the final days on the campaign trail, both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump made closing argument speeches. Two nights and 200 miles apart, the dueling closing arguments outline the choice that U.S. voters face as they weigh two very different visions of leadership and America's future. Either Donald Trump or I will be in the Oval Office. The White House as her backdrop. Donald Trump would walk into that office with an enemies list. When elected, I will walk in with a to-do list. Vice President Harris delivered her speech at the same site former President Trump spoke on January 6th before a mob stormed the Capitol. Harris highlighting hard-fought civil rights battles. They didn't do that, only to see us submit to the will of another petty tyrant. Promising to help first-time homeowners, adults caring for kids, and seniors. I make mistakes, but here's what I promise you. I will always listen to you. And promising to protect reproductive rights and democracy. No president's done more for Puerto Rico than I have. While in Pennsylvania, Trump spoke to Latino voters about his administration's response to hurricanes. The people of Puerto Rico trust you and will have high hopes. And later appeared with Latino supporters, defending his closing argument rally on Sunday where some speakers made racist and lewd comments about Puerto Ricans and others. An absolute love fest, and it was my honor to be involved. Now, in these final days, there's been a lot of back and forth around the word garbage, and it actually started, as mentioned in that story, when a comedian during Trump's New York rally called Puerto Rico a, quote, floating island of garbage. President Joe Biden responded to the remarks during a call with Latino voters, saying, quote, the only garbage I see is Trump's supporters. The White House says the president was referring to the comedian's rhetoric and was not criticizing people based on who they vote for. But the Trump, the Trump campaign has seized on the comments bashing Harris and Biden during a press conference in a Trump-branded garbage truck. Well, turning to how the polling and election results will work, the latest CBS News polling shows the presidential race is neck and neck, and the nation will be watching as news agencies start making their projections the night of the election. Here's an inside look at how CBS News determines results. We start with our exit polls. CBS News Executive Director of Elections and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto, says the polls are the first indication of how a race is unfolding followed by county votes. What we do at the data desk is we look for patterns in the vote. The 2020 presidential race in Wisconsin serves as an example, with blue arrows showing shifts to President Biden and red arrows demonstrating shifts to former President Donald Trump. If we see consistent patterns in those vote shifts, then our models can start to point to the idea that the state is heading in one direction or another. Turnout is also an important factor in making decisions. The higher bars represent more voters. We look at whether there is turnout in each and every one of these counties that's sufficient for a candidate to make a margin that could give them or add to a statewide lead. Decisions also depend on when counties report results. Four years ago, this is what it looked like three hours after polls closed in Pennsylvania. We still didn't see a lot from Philadelphia, from all these voting rich places that we know are going to be important in the state. It all figures into projecting an election that could be one of the closest in history. We're looking and trying to understand what's happened, but more importantly, why it's happened, what the patterns tell you about what the voters have chosen. Those choices will soon become clear, with patients advised as the process plays out. And a growing number of newspapers are not endorsing a presidential candidate this cycle. That includes the Washington Post. Nearly one third of its editorial board stepped down in protest of the Post's decision. The newspaper's own TikTok account is using satire to criticize the timing.
Our editorial staff, which is the opinion section of a newspaper, has written our endorsement for Kamala Harris here. Time to publish. Wait, stop. Don't publish it. A lot of mixed opinions over these decisions. As KCCI's Olivia Tyler reports, it's not clear if this shift from major newspapers across the country will have an impact on the 2024 election. The Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times, the Des Moines Register, all making the decision not to endorse a presidential candidate. What's interesting about choosing not to endorse a candidate politically is it's actually a callback to what journalism was designed to be. Ashley Jones teaches journalism and communications at Wartburg College. She says the average American doesn't always know that political endorsements come from the opinion section. And unfortunately, because it has been going on so long, we aren't trained to see that difference anymore. The Register has been endorsing political candidates for decades. The Post has endorsed presidential candidates since the 80s. My sources at The Post believe this has been a serious blow to the bottom line of the paper, underscoring just how badly the business has been damaged. I'm sure there won't be a massive reaction to this. Olivia Tyler, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's news leader. Iowans will decide whether nearly 70 judges stay on the bench or go. What voters need to know about Iowa's judicial retention election. But first, the candidates in Iowa's 2nd District want your vote, and here is their final pitch. We need someone who is going to fight for us. And I know what it's like to be a political outsider. You know, I grew up in a town of 700 uh, in, in, in a family that never, uh, you know, was involved with politics and didn't have any money or any influence. And I know what it's like to work hard every day and still struggle to put food on the table. And I am going to fight for everyday Iowans to expand the middle class, to bring down our costs and ensure our rights and freedoms going forward. I have uh, shown to the first uh, district of Iowa that I work endlessly and tirelessly for them to serve them. I am at uh, whether when I'm in Iowa, whether I'm in Iowa or whether I'm in D.C., I am meeting with individuals. I am known to get things done uh, in Washington, D.C. So whether it's on a biofuel bill, whether it's on in vitro fertilization, whether it's on child care, we're going to keep keep advancing those things that make Iowa the best place to work, live, play and raise a family.
On Tuesday, Iowans will be making their pick for president and deciding all four of Iowa's congressional seats. They'll also decide which judges get to keep their seat on the bench. In Iowa, judges are appointed by the governor, but it's up to the voters to decide whether those judges stay or go. Guy Cook with the Iowa Bar Association says this system helps keep politics out of Iowa's judicial system. The problem with directly electing judges is that um, these are campaigns, just like an ordinary campaign. Uh, money is raised, money is spent, and you certainly don't want to be a litigant in a courtroom and the person on the other side that you're litigating against has given a lot of money to the judge. You can see how that would corrupt the system. This year, one Supreme Court justice, four appellate judges, and 64 district court judges will be on Iowa ballots. If a judge receives a majority of yes votes, the judge serves another full term. But if a judge gets a majority of no votes, the judge is removed from office at the end of the year and the governor will appoint someone new. District and appellate judges serve six-year terms, while Supreme Court justices serve eight-year terms. After serving a full year on the bench, every justice and judge must stand for retention at the next general election, and then near the end of each regular term of office. To help inform Iowa voters, the Iowa State Bar Association conducts a judicial performance review. They ask their attorneys to rate judges on their performance. Now, you can find a link to that review on our website. Here's what that review looks like. It has more information on things like what makes a good judge, they say. It also will help you know what names will be on the ballot. For example, if you live in Polk County, you look there and find you'll be voting on District 5C judges. The review then has biographies with each judge's experience and credentials. And then it shows you how attorneys rate each judge on things like knowledge of the law, temperament, and ability to decide cases without outside influence. When you go to vote, you'll likely see multiple judges listed. These people are not running against each other. They're listed individually, so you'll be asked to vote yes or no on each one. The race for Dallas County attorney is heating up. We'll hear from the two people going for the spot coming up after the break. But first, a final message from the candidates in Iowa's 2nd Congressional District. I'm retired. I save for retirement. I don't need a full-time job. I'm not looking for a political career. And I have actually committed to donating my first year salary to nonprofits in the district. So um, I, I believe in putting skin in the game and letting people know, you know what, I'm not, I'm not in this for a career, I'm not in this for the money, I'm in it to make change. Iowans should vote for me in the second district because I'm an authentic truth teller and it's time we get that back into politics. If you might, you might not like what you say, we might not agree on every topic, but I'm always going to tell you the truth and we're going to find common ground. And that is what people in Northeast Iowa want. People are going to get the work done. And I've proven that over my life. Every obstacle put in front of me, I have accepted the challenge and gotten it done. I feel the pain that uh, you're all feeling with inflation, with energy costs, with utility costs. Um, the angst you feel over global security issues and potentially seeing our young men and women have to engage in a foreign war. My boys are 13 and 11. I think about those things. And so my pitch to everyone would be, if you want someone to go fight for taxpayers, fight for our rural economy, fight for that safety and security uh, for our communities, um, I'm your person and I'll continue to work hard for you.
Welcome back to Close Up. It is hard to drive almost anywhere in Dallas County without seeing a yard sign for the candidates running for Dallas County Attorney. KCCI's Bo Bowman shows us how the exponential growth in the county has really put a spotlight on this race. I think one of the main reasons is really the stark contrast. You know, I've, I've been a career prosecutor. I've been prosecuting 15 years. And I think people, you know, they look at the country and they look at things going on and they want to make sure that their community is safe. Republican Matt Schultz has held several public offices in his career, serving as a city council member in Council Bluffs before being elected as Iowa's Secretary of State and later the Madison County Attorney. Democrat Megan Guns has worked in the Dallas County Attorney's Office and now in Polk County as a prosecutor. Both campaigns started trading barbs last week. Guns posted on Facebook saying that Schultz reacted to her mother's post from six years ago. Not true. Wasn't me. Schultz now claims that was a spoof account on Facebook calling out the Democratic Party for identity theft. Schultz was the victim in an identity theft case that happened more than a decade ago when he was the Secretary of State. An employee at a Democratic consulting firm pled guilty in that 2012 case. I have no idea who it is, but I just can tell you in the past, I've had people try and impersonate me uh, to try and get for political tricks. And you know, they, people who play those games get caught. I find it very coincidental that those likes and those laughing uh, things came onto my mom's Facebook account the day before his slam website against me came out in which he used uh, a bunch of photos of me that were posted by other people. As Dallas County continues to grow, both candidates recognize that crime will build too and say they are focused on campaigning on those issues. I think what people are really care about is making sure that you have a prosecutor who's tough on crime. And, and I have that experience. That as people are moving to Dallas County, those young families know that they have somebody who is experienced and is going to be able to keep the community safe and work with law enforcement. Bo Bowman, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. When we return, what you need to know before heading to the polls on Election Day. But first, the candidates running to represent Iowa's 3rd and 4th congressional districts make their final pitch to voters. I have been able to lead, with my military background, a focus on delivering results for the people who elected me. I'd be privileged to earn that again, but I want to be clear about the things that we've done already. Rural housing, helping families making sure that veterans are taken care of. These are all things that passed in a divided Congress and signed into law by a president as a freshman. We've outkicked our coverage on this, and it's because Iowans gave us the voice to go and fight for them, but they also asked us to deliver results, not talking points. So if you're focused on a results-driven member of Congress, I'd be honored to have their vote. I love this country, and I've dedicated my life to giving back. Eight years in the military, a deployment to Afghanistan, 10 years working at USDA. I'm ready right now to serve Iowans. When I was in the military, we didn't judge each other on our politics, we judge each other on our character. Guys from opposite ends built a brotherhood to defend this country at a time of war. And the key thing is from my time in the military to my time at USDA. Every single time I've taken that oath of office and I raised my right hand, I didn't take an oath for a party, I didn't take an oath for a person. I took an oath to defend the Constitution and our country and that's exactly how I will uh, be a representative for the 3rd District here in Iowa. The bottom line is I delivered conservative results for the last uh, four years in Congress. I am passionate about my job. I sit on the top committees in Congress on ways and means that handles health care, that handles trade, that handles reduction of taxes. And I also sit on agriculture to help our producers to pass the farm bill. And every day I work to try to figure out solutions. And we have to make sure that we continue to have the majority in the House, make sure the Senate is the majority of Republicans, and make sure Trump, Donald Trump gets elected. Those are the keys to making sure that we can pass some of these great conservative policy agendas that, that I've noted. We need to focus more on reorienting uh, the focus of what we do legislatively on taking care of the people on the ground and giving them the opportunities they deserve to thrive. And a big way to do that is to really address the fact that we have disproportionate corporate power um, that's really uh, corroding the trust that people have in our governance and our politics. I am the one candidate in this race that is truly independent um, of the powerful class and is therefore most willing and able to really get to the root causes of what ails us in this congressional district and in this state.
Welcome back. We are now just two days from the general election and we have more information for voters. KCCI has an Iowa election guide to help you find your polling location and how to cast your ballot. You can find answers to these questions and more by searching Iowa election guide on our platforms. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'll see you back here next Sunday. Have a great day.